We're still bringing you up to speed with the first day of the funeral rites of the late UN Chief Kofi Atta Annan. He served as the seventh Secretary General of the United Nations and the very first real black African to occupy that position. Now, a number of people have intimated who they think or who they know Kofi Annan to be. But there's one person who worked closely with the man. She was one of the very first people to receive the man into the United Nations Secretary General. General Office when he was appointed and she comes all the way from Harlem inside the United States and she joins me here this afternoon. She's the mayor of Harlem. Uh, she also doubles as a goodwill ambassador to Africa. She is Queen Mother Dr. Deloy Blakely. Good afternoon to you madam. Good afternoon. How are you? I'm doing fine. Only thing I travel for three days. Wow. How was up here from the United States? How, how, how has it been over the years? I understand you've been in and out of Africa for the past 25 years. How has it been? It has been very, very moving. Every time as an African descendant of the transatlantic ocean of the slave trade of my ancestors, it's just been very moving every time I come to Africa. I travel throughout Africa. Now, uh, traveling throughout Africa, uh, you know that Kofi Annan has served Africa well. Today, his motto remains a lie in the foyer of the Accra International Conference Center. You work closely with him. Who is Kofi Annan? He was a man that cared. He was a man with simplicity. He had time for all of us, not only the member states of countries, but also civil society, which I represent. I represent the poor and the powerless within our society, and he would allow me always to talk to him. He was never too busy to hear Queen Mother's voice about the concerns of the world for the people of the world. Now, let, let's, let's talk about your relationship with Kofi Annan. You mentioned that he will always listen to you anytime you call on him. What was the relationship like between you and Kofi Annan? I can see there's a letter in your hands uh, Kofi Annan wrote to you. This letter was written when he first arrived in 1997. And how many people would have his signature? I talked about peace, stability of the country. If you have peace and stability of a nation, then you can do the work that is necessary in achieving the sustainable development goals that we all stand for. Now, uh, talking about peace and stability, let's look at women's role in achieving peace and stability. Do you think a woman someday will occupy that high position of being the UN Secretary General? We are looking forward to that. They are holding other positions. Our Deputy Secretary General is a woman, Amina Mohammed from Nigeria. We are looking forward for a woman to hold the helm of the United Nations. And it will come to pass. Now what's the legacy Kofi Annan leaves behind? The legacy that Kofi Annan has left to the world, that it doesn't matter what family you come from, but what will be your contribution to all of us? Now let's look at the younger generation. What should they pick up from the life of Kofi Annan and the legacy he leaves behind? Kofi Annan has left all of his works, his papers, his research in Harlem at the University of City College, City University, for the young people to study him and to move in the position of his legacy and understanding what we must do to sustain the world. How does it feel, before you take leave of us, how does it feel, I mean, knowing Kofi Annan very well and knowing that that is his motto remains lying in there, in the foyer of the conference center, how does it feel? Very tearful for me, but very proud at the same, that a son of Africa has returned to the soil of Mother Africa.
what a great legacy he returned home. As a world citizen, he was, but he never forgot home, Ghana. Thank you very much, and so that was our Queen Mother, Dr. Deloy Blackley, and she's been speaking to us on uh, her relationship with Kofi Annan. She, she was one of the very first people to receive him into the United Nations office as Secretary General, and then uh, later, he was also very close to her when it comes to uh, affairs of uh, being a mayor of Harlem. He was always, always present when she called on him. And so it's a solemn ceremony, but she's very well happy that she has to see the final mortal remains of the late UN chief as he goes home. She is proud of his achievements as an African son.